Hello, this is Miss Tracy from K-12 Next Generation again to do our step two of our kite building. Remember that uh, the first time we were looking at the kite that we had made and talked about the triangles and the fact that we had to make four, four structures like this. And we learned how to make those and so I hope that now you have all four and we're going to look at how we cover them. You can cover them with all kinds of things. This actually is a tissue paper that I got from um, one of those dollar stores for uh, tablecloth. Okay. Um, I also got uh, some banners, some birthday banners that I have a student using. This is a plastic. Okay. And you can use uh, gift paper, tissue paper. You don't probably want to use a paper that's really heavy like a construction paper because that would weight it down. But I thought what I would do with mine today, just for the heck of it, is I would use a newspaper. This is pretty light. Okay. And I thought that this is kind of colorful. So I'm going to use the newspaper. Now when I first started to do this, <clears throat> I ended up tracing a triangle and cutting it out and tracing the triangle and cutting it out. Till I realized that all I needed to do was trace one triangle and cut out, you know, four or eight at a time. You need eight. It depends on whether you want to use the same <clears throat> type of material for each one or not. I probably would use this for maybe four and then I might find something else to use for the other four. But let's see how this goes. So, I have my paper. I have my triangle. <clears throat> and I want to trace around this, but I don't want to trace around this really closely because I want to overlap this to make sure that it holds onto, <clears throat> onto, the, onto the straw. You see how this is overlapped? Okay, so I'm going to give myself probably about an inch or so. And so I'm going to trace way out here. So I can always trim it. Always trim if I've got too much. If I don't have enough, I'm stuck. Okay. And then I'm going to take and cut this out. <coughs> and I'm going to keep my paper folded. I don't have to cut it out over and over again. <clears throat> also kind of nice because I don't have to worry about cutting on the lines. But I do. Just give me an idea. I'm going to put my scraps away so I can pick that up later. And here I have one, two, three, four. Okay. Well, I definitely like this one, so I'm going to use this one. And I think this one, because I don't really like the stuff up here at the band. So I'm not going to use this one. And I'm going to get another piece of paper, and I'm going to just lay it down on, on my table so I don't get glue on here. And I'm going to face this opening to you, but you would face it to yourself, okay? Because what you want to do is to cover this side and this side, like that. Okay. It's two pieces, and you're covering it on either side of the opening. And so I'm going to just lay this down this way. The first one's pretty easy. You can't very well go wrong with that one, but you can go wrong with the other one if you're not careful. And the first thing that I do is I take 
and I will just put glue on the straw. And hopefully the straws aren't going to turn around on you. Well, sometimes they do. And I'm going to just lay this down here on the paper. Like that. And just sort of push it and roll it a little bit. Now, normally what I would do is I would put this aside and let that dry for a minute, and I'd do the same thing to the other three. Okay? But... I don't have the other three right now, so I just made this one sample for you. So I'm going to glue this on instead. Now, when you fold this over, you end up having these ends get in the way. So I actually cut my ends off this way and that way. And, and I cut it in this way, sort of at an angle going towards the point and an angle going towards the point. And again, an angle to the point and an angle to the point. And I do this because otherwise the paper gets in the way when I try in the corners. It gets in the way when I'm trying to fold it over. And this way it shouldn't get in the way, but let's just test it out and see. Okay. Nope, that looks good. Okay. Well, that looks good, so I can do this one. Now, I take and I put some glue right up here, in here, right alongside, right alongside the um, Draw, and then I'm going to sort of almost roll it in, and then I'd use my fingernails to sort of pinch it back. Like this, and if you don't have fingernails, that's okay because what we do have is a brush. Okay, paint brushes work so well, and we're going to use this paintbrush for another thing too that I'll show you in a minute. First of all, we want to just make sure that we have this down like that. Okay. We're going to do the same thing here. Bring it here and here. Now we did use our paintbrush at one point to actually brush this smooth. And you can do that. I don't have right now I don't have a paintbrush that is quite big enough to do that well. It's a tiny brush. You might want a little bit bigger than that. Again, I'm going to make this smooth out like this. And then we have our third side. We know that all triangles have three sides. It sort of helps us remember that they all have three sides because we have to put the glue on the three sides of the straws and turn them in. I probably could have left a little bit more on this one. And this side is a little bit shy. Okay. Now, the, the, the structure here is really important, and I don't want, I don't want the glue to give way off of the straws or anything. So I will tend to take my glue and put it on the piece that's flipped over like this. And then I use my brush to brush it down. Because what's nice about Elma's glue is that when it dries, you're not going to be able to see it, but it's going to give kind of almost a shellacking kind of coat to my joints here and that's what I really want to protect and make sure are tight. 
and there's another time when we do this is when we put this thing together that we're going to have to also take and stabilize things with some glue. I'm not very happy with how I shorten this piece of all. So I'm going to just try and see if I can get it to glue in a little better. And there we have our first side. Now I'm going to put it back open to you so I know where my second side is that I cover. Can you tell where it is? It's hard because you now have this on here. These are the, the open face, and so we want it over here on this side. And I actually am going to just take it like this and then flip it because otherwise I'll forget what I'm doing and then make a mess. Okay, so again I'm going to take my glue, flip it over, and put my glue on the straws. Glue and put it down here on the straws. Make sure I don't shortchange myself again. So I'm going to move that over a little bit. Okay. And just sort of make sure these straws are down here. And do you remember what I do next? So I want to be able to fold this paper in without corners getting stuck in my way. I'm going to cut towards the corner on a slant, towards the corner on a slant. Pull that off. Okay. Slant. And slant. And pull it off. And then the same thing here, goes on the screen. And normally, I say I would have left this to dry so that my straws were on here fairly well before I started to do this. But since I only have just the one structure, I needed to, to just go ahead and put this on. But you can see how if this was to dry, it would be much easier and steadier. Now, I'm going to leave this side for last, and I'm going to do these sides first. Okay, and again, glue on. I might glue on here. Inside. And I take and fold it in. Bring it out, run down here. This. Get this in here a little closer. It's got nice and, well, you might not be able to see, but this, that's in there pretty nice and tight. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing to this one here. Now, sometimes people say, well, where do you find these things? Do you make them up? Well, I wish I did. I'm not that creative. This actually I found online in an open educational resource, which we know is what K-12 Next Generation uses, all open educational resources, because they're free. And I like free. It gives me the opportunity to do a lot of stuff and learn a lot of things and not have to pay a lot of money to do it. And it was actually um, online and referenced by a highlight magazine. So this is one of the activities that they had done. Now this piece here, obviously I can't wrap it around, so I'm going to just put it up. And I do it by turning it to begin with so that I can get it tight. And then I'm just going to run my fingers along this piece here. 
And I am going to put a little bit of glue on the outside. I'm going to put a lot on this one. Put a little bit, okay, with my paintbrush. Just to make sure that that seam is going to stay. And then I take and do the same thing on the inside here. I want these seams to stay. Now because we are putting quite a bit of glue, not gobs, but we're putting quite a bit here, and to, to get the seams to stay in place, and we want to make sure that we allow it to really dry well, I would say before you try and finish the kite off, but you might want to let this sit for a day or two to really dry well. Then when you put it together, you're not dealing with trying to, to get around any kind of wet glue or anything like that. And so now you have your first piece. Okay. Like this one. Here and here. I think that's going to be kind of fun. I might take, when I do this one, I might take all different materials and cover it. I have to make sure, though, that weight wise, it's about the same. I've got to get rid of this little piece here. Now, paint brushes are not really supposed to be used for glue, but they work really well on one condition. After you finish using this paintbrush with the glue, you need to go and wash it off. Make sure you wash it off well in water and clean it well and then it will be okay to use again for paint. And also make sure that you close the glue or it will dry out. So I'm going to put my glue there. I'm going to put my scissors over here. Pick up my trash. And I'm going to take that and my paintbrush to the kitchen, throw out and wash up. So I'll be all ready for my next activity. So this is Miss Tracy from K-12 Next Generation. Uh, I'll see you when you get your four, four triangles done. And they've had a chance to dry for a bit. I'll show you how we put it together. Till then, you take care. And have a great evening.